Hello everybody, welcome back to the studio. Another community wallet challenge. This one's coming in from DS Leather Goods on Instagram. The NAR wallet challenge. DS Leather Goods has his NAR wallet patterns available for 50% off on his Etsy store. So you can download that and participate in the challenge. I think he's got it running to June 6th. So there's still a bit of time. So get over there, download the plan, take him in the on Instagram for your challenge and get in on the potential prizes. First place is for best overall. Second is best leather combo. And third is his own pick based on aesthetics and photo presentation. Uh, the prizes are different wallets and download stuff and a whole bunch of cool stuff. Each of the different categories is judged by an individual maker and it's done independently. So they don't know which other judge is chosen. So you could win all three. So obviously we're going to go for best overall. Second place is best leather combo, which is where I'm hoping I'm going to edge everyone else out. Fingers crossed. Third, with Dan's combo, he mentioned on a live stream that it'd be interesting if somebody made each component of this wallet from a different color leather. So I'm gonna see if I can manage that. So here's what we got. It's one, two, three, four, five unique pieces. What kind of wallet is this? I should explain that. It's a little flap wallet. So it's got one pocket in the middle for coins, cash, cards, and then one exterior pocket for cards. The main body is gonna be made from this turquoise, metallic leather. This is beautiful stuff. I did a review of all of this, of each one of this line, all colors, in a, in a video that'll be up here, I think right there. The exterior pocket is going to be navy butero. The interior pocket will be natural Minerva. The little locking piece is going to be turquoise Minerva. And then the actual little flap will be navy blue Minerva. In selecting the colors, I wanted to try it again. I was trying to go for, let's make each piece a different color. So the most variation in colors I had was either browns or like, or blues. And I thought this would be a little nicer with the turquoise and the blues and it kind of feels like it all flows. I had all these laid out and was like, yeah, this seems to make sense. The natural I like just cause it's a nice, nice contrast. It's also going to highlight the thread. blue and turquoise thread. Now I am using two thread colors. What I'm going to do is take a page from Claridge Leather and use the, I think it's called the Norwegian Stitch, I think, maybe. He's the only one I've seen do it and I think that would be really neat. I haven't seen any other entries yet with that type of stitch. I actually haven't seen anybody else use that stitch on Instagram or anywhere else. So I don't know how popular it is or whether it's something he just does, but I think it's gonna be fun. And it seems like a pretty simple stitch to do. So we're gonna try it for the first time making this. So hopefully it all goes well and it'll screw it all up. Okay, so I've already got my pieces laid out on each of the respective panels. And this part's fairly straightforward. So I will um, probably flip on a little time lapse or speed this up. Uh, because this is really just putting the patterns on the leather, tracing it out, and then cut into those lines. So I did modify the plan slightly, not in the, not in the design, just in the dimensions.
Okay, so everything's cut out. So I've got the two small pieces done and burnished. Now I'm gonna move on to the two pockets. Like a, I don't know, this is an 80 or so. And I'm just making sure that the curve, if there is any curve, is nice and refined and get that curve so you don't feel any little bumps. Then I move on to the 120 maybe and just start consolidating all of those fibers. A watered down version of token all in water. I think it's 50-50. Canvas cloth. So now at this point, I know that's good. So then I come in with my edger. That feels pretty good. So then I'll move to the next one. 400 now, 400. So it's when I get to this point, I'm at about 400. Now I'll take my creaser. So I usually go up by 200s, like 50 or 60, 200, 400. I think this one's 600. Let's now come in with our token all water mixture again. So that's starting to feel pretty good. So now I'm gonna come back in with that same 600. Token all again. So the final grit that I have is like a, it's probably a 1200 or so. Cause that really brings out the shine. Token all in water again. So I'll go to close up so you can see this edge. It's got a pretty good polish on there, just with the token on mixture. Okay, so we'll get this little tab put into place and then we're gonna mark where the glue is gonna go. So I'll take the flap, put that in, make sure this is nice and tight. Then on this side, i make a mark with my awl. And then within those marks is where I'm gonna put the glue. Once the glue is set, I'm then gonna come in and I'll skive this piece right down to zero. There we go. So now I just let those dry and get all those pieces stuck together. This is all glued up. We're gonna get all of our lines on here marked. So I'm going to take the template, get one pair of dividers and set it for my trim allowance. And then with my second pair of dividers, set that for my stitch line. I've cut the corner on this template and I just line it up and describe that corner. 
Same thing on this side. To mark my stitch line, since I only have a square here, I have just a little anvil for rivets, which happens to mark, match the arc of my stitch line perfectly. So I'll just come in, line up both sides of the straight lines to the edge, and then just lightly mark this arc. So now I can take my stitching chisels and then follow this all the way around. Okay, so here we go with the Norwegian stitch. So we've got our long main thread, and then we've got a second thread here that will be running through the middle. Do one back stitch to start, and lock in my back thread, and then come through basically halfway. And then tighten that first stitch. So now we stitch forward as normal. Make sure it lines up properly. So then sink the back stitch first. And then before we tighten that one down, come through and cross these needles. sink this stitch. Okay, so what's always, always a good thing to do when you're trying something new is film yourself and then immediately put it on the internet. That's always a good first step when you're learning something for the first time. So that's what we're doing here. So actually, let's take a look at this. This is before hammering. So this hammering could make a big difference to here, but if you can see this, these loops are nice and even. My first row, when I, the very first time I did this, some of the turquoise thread is pulled a little tighter than the others. Like this thread right here is looser than these ones up here. So tightening that turquoise, if I do this again, I'm not going to tighten that turquoise. I'm just going to leave it loose and tighten it with the, with the main thread. A saddle stitch that's been pulled too tight along the main. And then when I got into it, I stopped tightening the secondary thread. This is much cleaner. It's just a nice clean back stitch as usual. So let's get this, we'll get this hammer down and see how that looks. So there's the stitching hammer down. Stitched on the flat piece, same process as before. So now we're going to trim off this excess.
let's say if you can see this edge or not. That's straight off of the knife. So if you want to know how to get really nice edges, this is how you start. That edge is officially polished. That's a really cool little wallet. Okay everybody, that's it for this one. Go check out DS Leather Goods on Instagram. Uh, check out the challenge he's got going on. Um, I think it's hashtag the NAR wallet. If you want to also check out all the other entries, there's a lot of really good ones. Tough competition. I think this is pretty good. Also go over to my Instagram page, check out the final photos. Thank you for watching and we will uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks friends.